This is KCTV English News. I'm Nick Brontis. The local business community thinks 2019 will be a better year than 2018. The Jeju branch of the Bank of Korea says the business index in December fell two percentage points from November to 60. The business outlook for January rose, however, to 61. Many respondents in both manufacturing and non-manufacturing sectors expect sales to increase. They say their biggest challenge is intensifying competition. Consumers in Jeju are paying more for goods and services. The Jeju branch of the Honam Regional Statistics Office says the consumer price index in Jeju last month was 1.1 percent higher than it was a year before. Prices for agricultural and seafood products rose 6 percent. Industrial goods such as snacks and kerosene were also more expensive. Consumer prices in most sectors, except for communications and public health, increased 1.7 percent over the period. Officials will test a reservation system this year for hikers who want to climb to the top of Halasan Mountain. Halasan National Park Office representatives say they will set up the system and begin using it on a trial basis in the second half of the year. Hikers will at that point need to make a reservation to go to the summit if they plan on using the Gwanamsa Samgakbong Trail or the Songpanak Azalea Field Trail. Roughly one million hikers visit the mountain a year. About 30 percent of them climb to the top. The fees at public parking lots have changed. People can park for free for the first 30 minutes. It is then 1,000 won for up to an hour and 500 won for every additional 15 minutes. The daily and monthly parking fees in Dong administrative districts are 10,000 won and 100,000 won, respectively. The same charges in suburban and rural Up and Myon districts are 8,000 and 75,000 won. Relatives of April 3rd incident victims, men of national merit and electric vehicle drivers qualify for a 50 percent discount. The local government is expanding support this year for Munhwa Nudi card holders from 70,000 won to 80,000 won annually. The province has set aside 1.8 billion won to fund the program, which benefits about 22,000 area residents. The cards are given to National Basic Livelihood Grant beneficiaries and low-income households. They can use the money on the cards to watch movies, buy books, and enjoy different types of performances. This week on Cheju A to Z, Todd Thacker takes a brief look at Altura Airfield. This site in Daejeong Upsogipo has a dismal history of military occupation. It was used as a launching ground for air attacks on China and for kamikaze raids in the final months of World War II. Jeju Island has always been a strategic location for both marine trade and, unfortunately, in times of war. From the Mongolian and Japanese invasions of centuries past, to the more recent occupation of Korea by Japan at the start of the 20th century, the island bears the scars of many military campaigns. One area in the southwest of the island near Sangmori Daejeongup is a prime example of this lasting evidence of military infrastructure. Altiru, which means a field down under, was once a massive 264 hectare airfield used by Japanese forces. It was the staging ground for long-distance air raids during the Sino-Japanese War, and later used to launch kamikaze raids during the final months of World War II. Much of the construction was done by locals, who were forced to labor under miserable conditions. Some 20 decrepit concrete hangars and part of a control tower still sit among rows of cabbages growing in the rich soil. 
In the background is a beautiful view of Sambangsan Mountain and Halasan Mountain to the northeast and Songaksan Mountain to the south. In the area is an anti aircraft emplacement built on a nearby orum or volcanic cone and an underground bunker which is registered Korea Cultural Heritage number 312. The provincial government is also conducting research into these military facilities and their history. The airfield is listed as national property and is under the purview of the Ministry of National Defense, though there have been discussions about a transfer back to the province sometime in the future. Todd Thacker, KCTV. Get into the holiday spirit at the Jeju Winter Festival, where you can enjoy music, Christmas lights, and other attractions in the heart of old Jeju City. Pick fruit, ride horses, feed farm animals, and more at QAD Natural Park's Camellia Festival, which is running through the end of January. Enjoy a unique and modern take on the works of Gustav Klimt and Friedensreich Hundertwasser at the new Bunker de Lumières. Cloudy skies early Thursday should clear up in the afternoon. For more, here's your forecast. The low in Jeju City will be 4 and the high later on 7 degrees. In Zogibo, temperatures will fall between 3 and 10. In Zhongzhan, the low will be 2 and the high in the afternoon, 7 degrees. Similar temperatures are expected across the island in Gosan. And the morning low up on the mountain at Song Panak will be 3 degrees below zero and the afternoon high to above. Out on the water, winds will be out of the northwest and north at 6 to 11 meters per second and seas will be relatively calm. Here's what's coming up. And that brings us to the end of today's newscast. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you'll tune in next time. Until then, don't forget to find us on YouTube by searching for KCTV E News Jeju. 시청자 여러분, 고맙습니다.